Hello, this is J.W. Greenbaum bringing you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. So underneath the camera today, we have a rather interesting knife, and that is the ZT-0450 uh, by Zero Tolerance. So this is the full tie version. They also make the ZT-0450CF, which has a blacked out blade and a carbon fiber uh, show side handle scale. Both knives have the same lock though, which is this uh, this uh, titanium lock side uh, frame lock. And yes, by the way, you actually do get a um, steel lock bar insert and lock bar over travel stop. Your blade steel is CPM S35VN. So good materials all around and yeah, really a nice knife. Uh, runs on KVT bearings, so let's uh, take out this, and let's do our measurements. So our blade is going to come in at just over three and a quarter inches. And as for our overall length, that's coming in at about seven and a half inches. So with that out of the way, let's measure our weight, which I am going to guess is about 3.25 ounces. Let's see. Wow, three ounces exactly. Okay, so actually a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice weight there, especially because it does feel a bit more hefty than that. And let's take out our. Uh, Kaiser Knives Denim Knife Roll, with which we will perform our pocket test. And into here it goes. Now, the first thing that you're probably going to notice is that this is not a shallow carry in the least, but it is a very secure carry. Um, and as you can see here, if you're a lanyard person, yes, you absolutely can put a lanyard on. It's got a lanyard hole. But yeah, not a shallow carry at all. Also a large pocket clip, but honestly, it is not something that you're going to feel in your hand. So, let's do a size comparison. Here's the Ontario Knives Rat Model 1, which actually is very similar on a, bla on a usable blade length. And obviously it is larger overall. Next is going to be our Ontario Knives Rat Model 2, which is similar on a vertical dimension, but as we can see here, smaller. Next, we are going to get our Token Spider Co. Paramilitary 2, which is going to be in Maximit has less usable blade and more usable handle. And next is going to be our token large EDC knife, which is our Cold Steel Recon 1. Quite a bit bigger. Then the so-called new kids on the block, the O-Knife Night Claw which we use to compare on a vertical dimension, not a uh, tip-to-butt dimension. And yeah, that's showing that yeah, the blade is somewhat thin, but not super thin, top to bottom. And finally, everybody's favorite toenail clipper, the Kershaw Platform, which of course is also made by the same parent company. It's similar top to bottom, but yeah, on no other dimension. Okay. So the ZT-0350 has been around since 2014. And I just called it the ZT-0350. It's, of course, the ZT-0450. But yes, it has been around since late 2014. I believe these actually went on sale in early 2015, but it was announced in 2014. And I think the first models were produced then. Now, the one thing about the ZT-0450 that I should notice is that in the past, it has had some issues. They have not related to the design, but they absolutely have related to the overall quality of the knife, and ZT has solved them. 
okay? They are gone now. So if you are aware of any issues regarding heat treat with the blade or alternately uh, lockup being not very significant, just know that if you buy a new knife, you absolutely will not have those problems. However, that's kind of an issue with ZT was, yeah, they absolutely had issue, had quality control issues for a number of years in the 2010s. They seem to have solved it now, which is great, but a lot of their designs seem to have lost popularity during those years. The ZT 0452 and the ZT 0562 seemingly exempted from that, but yeah, it's just something that I have noticed. So, how good is the ZT-0450? Well, as we can see here, it absolutely is slicey. Uh, I mean, we are dealing with a flat saber grind, but it's pretty slicey, pretty thin behind the edge. And that's nice. And as you can see here, I actually prefer this, this grip right here with my thumb right there. We do have some jimping. It's quite usable, quite good. And uh, yeah, so the one thing I will say about this is some people are not going to find it a stellar value because the price, while good for a US made full tie frame lock, Objectively, it can't really compete against the uh, the Chinese knives. You are looking at a knife that goes for about $232 to $240. I actually managed to find a couple of differences in the prices, you know, that vary a little bit between stores. I don't think it's, it's mandatory to get it at any one price. So, yeah, you can find about an $8 price difference with these, but... Uh, between $232 and $240. So yeah, there absolutely are Chinese knives that are being done at a bit better of a price point, specifically we, I'm thinking of. But if you really are trying to buy American, uh, this is still at a decent enough price point, specifically if you're going for a titanium frame lock. And it absolutely will cut, will slice, and will hold up well. I mean, keep in mind, a frame lock is not going to be a fragile knife. Um, no, it's not going to be a triad lock, but uh, it absolutely will be better than a liner lock. And uh, you will be able to, in addition to slice cardboard, do stuff like um, cut acrylic materials, uh, could probably do some light wood processing with this knife and I would also say uh you know compressed board related stuff so whether you would be interested in the ZT0450 really depends on what you are looking for out of a knife if you're looking for the absolute best value then you should probably go elsewhere but this Dmitry Sinkovich design knife really does have a it begins to really start making sense if you're specifically looking for something not made in China because it's actually rather competitive at that pr at that price point. And I know some people are going to say, well, people shouldn't be boycotting China. Well, then, uh, depends on... For, well, first off, we sliced the packing peanut. But second off, I, to which I say, okay, China should not be having all those human rights violations. And to which I would then say, there are absolutely going to be people that are boycotting China pretty much no matter what. And if you think that the companies that are making knives outside of China aren't going to capitalize on that, well, you've really got another thing coming. Um, so whether it should happen or not is really irrelevant. It's going to happen. And ZT will absolutely cash in on that. However, if you if you're just looking for a specific design then yes this will not fail you this is a fine knife it's uh a very nice tie frame lock has a great action kvt bearings really a nice knife and i would say that yes it is worth it 
specifically if you're boycotting China, but if, even if you're not, it's a very nice knife. And one that I actually prefer to its larger and more popular cousin, the ZT-0452, which again is a Dmitry Sinkovich design. It's actually basically the same knife, but there used to be a third size, a third size the ZT-0454, which is long out of production, but that is neither here nor there. Um, I personally prefer this one, and it's actually probably my second favorite ZT after the ZT-0562. So, nice knife. I would recommend it. And this has been J.W. Greenbaum, having brought you Gaining an Edge, the show where we discuss, review, examine, look back upon, and generally enjoy knives. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you could leave a comment, I promise I will get back to you. And if you could uh, subscribe, I absolutely would encourage you to do that, especially since at 500 subs, we are having a giveaway for three different knives. Also, uh, please note that I um, would also I would encourage you to hit the bell notification icon because we also, in addition to um, Gaining an Edge, we also have Fun Knife Fridays, which are coming up next, even though I'm filming this on a Saturday, scheduling issues, and two for Tuesday and three for Thursday. So this is J.W. Greenbaum signing off and wishing you a great day.